big, big defender of religious freedoms. And that's, Philadelphia is named after the, you know, the city of Burgundy Love, religious freedom. Now look at it. It's a cesspool of uh, liberals. And, but anyways, I don't think I'll have rabbit hole. Okay, oh. going right along. But don't think it's over. <coughs> Trump is just getting started. I mean, they're, we, we need, we really need to fall in behind the guy. Um, we need to be vocal. You, you see all these idiots out on, I'm sorry, all these misguided people out on the streets protesting. And one thing about Trump, I don't think we have to be political. Correct. correct. So, <laughs> so you see these idiots out there protesting. Uh, and I'm going to read my, my verse, Psalms 94:16. The question is, who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand for me against the workers of inequity? So who's going to stand up? we got to stand up to them. Amen. And I'm not going to say who or what, but there was one person that said, well, we can't do that or we'll lose a job. A person here at the church. And uh, I... I you're so misguided. You put your job before the. You have to. You have to stand up. You got to call black, black, and white, boy. Yeah. If that's what you believe, what are you afraid of? Read uh, I know it's Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the above. Uh, somewhere in Second Corinthians, you know, that's in the New Testament. Yes. Uh, you know, you have to say that you you can't oh. put your. Do uh, you know where I'm going? I, I do. Nine and ten. No. No. One of my machines. Chapter twelve about his grace and the reproaches and. No, no, I'm talking about being for uh, twenty. Read twenty-four through twenty-seven, Pastor, please. Of. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Oh. What was you? I was in... You the Old Testament, weren't you? 2 <laughs> Corinthians 2.11? Yeah. 2. 2 uh, Corinthians 11, 24 through 27. I'll get there. I should have asked Maddie. Uh, I know. He's probably ready. There it is. Okay. 2 Corinthians 11. 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils uh, in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, fastings often, in cold and nakedness. So what well, we got to worry about? <laughs> and we're we beaten forty times. We just had that in Sunday school too. Forty people. Okay. Have we? You know, they had a run. Even today in this world, people in Iraq and. Iran, Syria, the Christians over there, they're getting beaten, they're getting beheaded, they're getting stoned. What, and we're, we're afraid to even say anything at work. We're afraid we'll lose our job. We're afraid that you know, someone might think different of us, you know. Who knew he's, you know. <coughs> what right do we have to be like that? Uh, I don't know how I got off on that either. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I started about, about Trump. You gotta stand. You gotta stand when he's wrong. Write letters. Say something. Do something. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Write a letter to Portland. 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 Portland whatever his name is. You know, just let them know. You gotta. Amen. You gotta be heard. Too long have we sat back and look what happened. We come so close to losing everything. We yeah. come so close. Close. We don't want to make the wave. We don't want to make waves. And it's scary. It's really scary. Because, you know, 
I heard on the news Obama, Obama's going to stay in Washington, D.C. After the, the first president's ever done that. First president's ever stayed in Washington, D.C. after this term. Why is he doing that? Because he's an accident. He's got to be, look at me, I'm wise, I'm smart, I can, right. you know, go back to Illinois or Hawaii or Colorado or wherever you come from, you know. But Clinton, Obama, they're not going away. Every right. time Trump does something they don't like, they're going to be right on top of them. And uh, like I said, I stayed up a lot, and, and it was sad, but in a way, you know, I was, I was cheering, and I was happy. The funniest thing I saw was that uh, one dude, Krakow, oh, is that his name? I call him Skeletor. He's bald, he's got glasses on him. That guy looked like his eyeball was going to pop out when the little springs would be, you know. That guy was having trouble. A very liberal Democrat. Anyhow, all that, all that stuff just kind of... It was Alan's fault. <coughs> but I, I got so much to be thankful for, as I started to say, and I don't even know where I left off. I'm thankful for Alan. I, I hate to say this. He's a good man. He's a good, good husband, good father. I'm glad he could outrun me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Alan, Alan I, with all seriousness, I mean, I, I watch him with the kids out here and at his house. And a very good man. And I'm glad to have you as my son. Don't look at me. But anyways, um, I just wish my boys, and that's my fault. That's another day. Uh, what I was going to talk about, uh, going to a little bit, I don't know how long I've been up. It seemed like I've been up there for a couple of days. But, um, I got laid off in July. And I asked and told the pastor about it. I don't, I don't think I asked for prayer. And that Sunday morning, he, he started talking. You know, and he was going to pray for him. I'm back there saying, oh, you no, know, I wanted to be laid off. Don't, don't pray. <laughs> I was on, that's actually almost an answer to prayer because I've been looking for something. It's real hard to find another job when you got a job, you know. Oh, but I'm sorry, I'm talking. Okay. You had your chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you made me forget where I was going with this. Kind oh, anyway, don't say nothing. Anyways, I got laid off in July and. Uh, a lot of prayer of what to do. Um, and I went up to Mount Gilead there and was talking to a, a woman. And she said, well, go down and talk to Eric down in the building D up at Child and Family Services. Or so I went down there and he said, yeah, we got the adult classes. I had a form that they gave me. I was laid off due to lack of funding. And so that qualifies you to be retrained. So I'm almost 60 years old. Why are you going to retrain an old dog like me? <laughs> that don't matter. So I said, well, they gave me a book and they had a welding, a welding class of track rivers. And so I'm an old one to learn how to weld. And it'd be kind of cool to hang the machine off in your yard and work out your garage or whatever. So one thing led to another. I applied for a Pell Grant. I got the Pell Grant. Applied for a WIA assistance, I got that. <coughs> I, first, I applied for unemployment. That's why I was doing the job of payment, so I was applying for unemployment. Got my unemployment, uh, 400 and something every two weeks. You know, and then uh, she told me to go talk to Eric, so I went down and talked to this guy, and blah, blah. Anyhow, so I sign up for all this stuff. I get, I get into the class, and uh, My unemployment, I forget how much, I think it's one year. It's like six to $800 you can draw on unemployment over. It's either a year or 26 months, I can't remember. 
Anyhow, I signed up for it. I get in this class. It, I don't know if you all, any of you have ever been on unemployment, but it's kind of confusing. Everybody's got their own idea how you do something. Most of them ain't right. <laughs> but uh, every two weeks I had to either, uh, I got to apply for job, two jobs a week. And every two weeks you got to report into the unemployment agency and they blah, blah, put you down and you get paid. You know, if you don't do, if you don't get the two jobs a week, you don't get paid. So I signed up for the school, and they sent me a letter saying, things have changed, you're not required to, uh, to, go, to go out and find and look for two jobs a week. You don't have that requirement, I was cool. So about a week later, I think, well, but I still got a call in. <coughs> so I run back up to they got an automated number. I don't know if any of you ever know. I, I, I get lost in those things, and they usually kick me off. Of it, but I'm stupid, and I end up out here where I should. Anyway, so I go back up there, and they, uh, they said, uh, oh, no, you don't have to do anything. So, cool. Two weeks come by, I don't get a check. No. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Or maybe since. Everything's got to restart. Three weeks went by, I didn't get a check. Like, hmm, that's on. <laughs> Four weeks went by, hmm, that's on. Five weeks went by. Okay. Like, okay, it's time to do something. <coughs> so I go up there, and the woman at the, up there at the D door, John Van Sur, said, Oh no, uh, you, uh, you don't get an important one. Even. Anyway, long story short, Y'all remember Arnton? I worked down at the house two years ago. Maybe two years this Christmas. Yeah. Or this January. And uh, the agreement I made with Miss Nora was I, I won't take any money until she sold the house. You know, last year, you know, it's like, hmm. I, I've never called and asked for the money because I don't think that's right. If, I, if you make an agreement, you should stick by it, you know. Why don't you trust the person? You know, and I know Miss Nora. She, she wouldn't do me wrong with, uh, now I'm thinking, well, man, that's a good little hunk of cheese I should have coming. You know, maybe I'll give me my motorcycle back, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, the year comes and goes, and another six months comes and goes, and I get laid off. I start getting unemployment, I lose unemployment. I, I got three unemployment checks, roughly 1200 bucks, out of $6,800. Lo and behold, I get a check in the mail from Miss Nora. Mm. How much do you think that check was for? $5,600. Is the amount of money I need to carry me through this Amen. class. Who mm. yeah. uh, mm. plans this stuff? Amen. You know, where's it come from? You know, <coughs> so now I got, I got the money in the bank. Mm. I can give myself the same amount I got from my, or would have got from unemployment. Mm. And I got enough to give. Yeah, God provides way you yeah, need. Yeah. Not necessarily what you want. I want that hardly real bad, <laughs> but I need to put groceries in and light bill. Amen. So that's what I'm thinking for. I'm thinking for a God that looks out for me. Amen. Yeah. He knows what I need before I need it, when I need it, and how I need it. Amen. You know, and to me that's just phenomenal. Amen. And the good news is yesterday I found out. I do get an important. <laughs> Man, God is good. I'm all good. God is good. God is great. Amen. And I do get an appointment. I had to fill out a form saying, explaining why I hadn't applied for the last six, seven weeks, and they'll either approve it or disapprove it. And I'll get that money back. But either way, I'll start getting money from here wow. forward. Amen. God is great. Amen. Does that mean I get hard? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh, my brother. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> well, but I don't think you left that anything here. Here. I only knew a portion of that story, y'all. I didn't know that ending part. Thanks for keeping me in suspense on that. <laughs> I mean, I knew about again. I knew about you working for Nora and waiting for the whole house to sell. I just didn't know that it came. Well, praise God and. And, and Brother Terry, let me just give a little bit of advice when you're filling out this new form of why 
you didn't do that for the last two weeks, don't say because the idiots at the office said I didn't have to. Well, they might not look favorably to that. <laughs> I went on one up here Monday. They go, yeah, I'm not here. Give me that. She's still without me. Okay. Mr. Woods did come up. No. There you go. Still, still pretty good about it. All right, amen. <laughs> but God is, God is so good. That is such a blessing. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to share a story with you all that Heather did not probably anticipate knowing that I was going to share with you all, and, uh, and I had no intentions of sharing it with you, and I won't, I won't keep you much longer, and then we're going to have one other song, um, but uh, this, if I can tell this one without emotion, there, it's going to be, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, I could, I could easily start off by talking about the absolute blessing that my, my family is to me. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't say enough how thankful I am for my wonderful wife and our amazing children. Um, but you all know that uh, the Lord brought me here um, and brought us here. Uh, I say seven, I keep saying seven, it's our seventh winter, I go with seven because of that, but it's really six years ago in August. And, um, and, and one, of the, one of the questions, one of the few questions the church had for me um, was asked by Brother Terry, and this, this part's not going to come as a surprise, you all have heard me say this before, um, but one of the questions that Brother Terry asked um, during the questioning phase, if you will, there at Fredericktown. He knows the question, I think. He said, we're just going to be honest with you. Or he said, at least I'm going to speak for myself. Not really looking for a pastor that's just planning on being here for two or three years, more or less. Where's your heart? I mean, are you here? Do you want to be here with us? Um, I hope you all know that I do <laughs> by now. I, I hope that um, you know that my heart is in the right place even when I'm not able to give you all that I want to give you as a pastor and um, you know um, I hope you all know that I've said in the past so this part's still not a surprise either um, I've said in the past we we as a family have never felt more comfortable anywhere that the Lord has moved us in our life and we have moved many different places as we are here in Ohio and specifically in Mount Vernon just a few uh, houses down from here. Never felt more comfortable um, in the pastorate than I do here. Um, we know that we have had some storms, we know that we've had ups and downs, <laughs> some pretty far downs, right? <laughs> some really high ups. And then just everything in between. Um, what I wanted to share with you is something that I don't think is going to catch any of you by surprise. And, and I hope that it doesn't. Um, you all, maybe, you, some of you know, and I'm going to share this story about the Smiths. I'm going to be done by nine. I, I'm promising you that. So I've got about four minutes to get through this. One of the stories I share with the Smiths that you all may not know is going to lead me to one final story. And um, a couple years ago, how long y'all been here now? Two or three years? <laughs> Thank you. So I was right. A couple years ago, down in Florida, um, one of the churches, you know, sometimes when we go down, I, I typically preach for Brother Pyle a lot. Um, and then some other churches, if I'm around, you know, for the conference, for Brother Troy, um, the church in Melbourne there, they had asked, um, asked me to come up. You all probably know that they were without a pastor, and uh, they just need, you know, had a void and asked me to come and build a pulpit. Well, you also probably know, or if you don't know by now, they issued me a call to, to pastor, just from that preaching. And um, I knew that that wasn't the pastor for me. I knew moving back to Florida wasn't, wasn't that two years ago. You can probably turn most of this off. I'm just going to cry the rest of the way anyway. Um, but what some of you may not know, and the Lord is, you know, I, I, was, I was totally involved and never for a second, I'm not telling you all of these stories for you all to think that forever for a second am I planning on leaving. But what, what a lot of you may not know is during that time, um, when that church was issuing me a call, 
Um, Brother Matt and Sister Lori started attending. Attending. They weren't members by any means yet. They just started attending. And um, um, Brother Matt and I, we had, um, and Sister Lori, a couple conversations at their house, a couple at my house, and a couple things about where the Lord would be leading them. And it was just beautiful and a beautiful part of my life and our life to say, God is not through with us here, right? We knew that he wasn't, but then he sends things like that, right? So Brother Terry, you get this check, and then he says, oh, guess what? Let me give you the, you know, the unemployment too. So those are just beautiful confirmations. Another beautiful confirmation that I have um, is nights like tonight, when I can sit back and I can reflect and I can sit there with my daughter and I can sit there knowing my family is here, knowing the conversations that we have and knowing how much you all love us, me, our family in this church. About two, uh, about a month and a half ago, another church, y'all better, maybe I should stop going away to churches, right? So the church out in California had a pastor when I went. You all know that. Remember the, the church out there I preached a revival for and then I later told you that Brother Prater uh, resigned the church. They also offered, you know, they said, would you all consider coming out here? You'll be full time and all these different things. I think you already know what my answer was, don't you? <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said I'm not going. But what the Rileys don't know is like a week or two after they called, maybe it was a couple of days, I walk in unbeknownst, and I'm just walking through, and you know, we know that this is going on, and we're just like thinking, no way, we're not going. All of a sudden, Alan says, hey, we're moving to California. I'm like, what is that? And you, you might even remember me saying, what are you talking about? Who's going to California? Heather, who's going? I don't know who's going to California. We are you going to California? I don't know what you're talking So I'm like, where did that come from? So anyway. Good. All the time. <laughs> so... God is good. So, listen, we're not going to California. We're not going to Florida. And God has us right here. Yeah. And this is where we want to be. This is where I desire to be, and there is no place I'd rather be. Now, when I think about working 84 plus hours for the next three weeks, do I necessarily, in, am I really excited about that? But because of 31, I get to pastor here. Isn't that awesome, right? So... We're going to push through it. <laughs> You're going to see me a little grouchy, maybe a little tired, and you might see me stumbling through and not being able to find some of the scriptures, but you're used to that, aren't you? <laughs> All right. I went over 9 o'clock. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm good. Let's stand together. Let's sing one more song as we give thanks to our God for this great night tonight. <clears throat> Get your folder out again. We're talking about our Lord. We're talking about... Salvation, we're talking about joy together. But you know what's going to be fantastic for believers is when we see our saviors face to face. What a day that will be. And that's what we'll close with this evening. Let me know. 
thinking through the story right before we prayed, and I remember actually not even saying that the church called me, but remember I was over at y'all's house, and we kind of mentioned that even before I talked to the Smiths, and and uh, and then the Rileys even used some words, they said, well, it was going to be something like, who's pastor us? And now, of course, I never even said I was considering going, so all of those things always mean so much uh, to me and to us, our family. All right, let's look to our Lord now in a word of prayer. And um, 